Okay, hi everyone, uh, Traveletta Guy here, and I have something interesting for you today. I have an interview with a young man here, and it's uh, quite interesting. He's living in Malaga, he's my neighbor here in Malaga, but he went to Barcelona. He had gone to Barcelona, and he actually got trapped there during this lockdown. So he was in one of the hot spots, in one of the hot areas in the whole world, in Barcelona. So he has an interesting story to tell, so we're going to go ahead and talk to him today. And my name is Liam. Liam, okay, Liam, and where are you from? I'm from Israel. Um, okay. And what brought you to Spain? Four months ago, well, in the beginning of January, I decided to come to Malaga to learn Spanish. It was always a dream. So okay. I came here, I started studying in the school. I remember you were doing quite well, too. You were yeah, learning it's, fast. It's getting better. <laughs> it's getting better. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, at the end of my course, and one of the last weekends, I um, I decided to go visit a friend. She lives in uh, Barcelona. Okay. And that was it, basically. <laughs> so <laughs> you I jumped forward very yeah, fast. Yeah, you, you were in Barcelona right when this whole thing started, then. Or you you left you left right when it was. Was there any kind of warning alert at that time? I don't remember exactly when you left. I wasn't like I was here. My father was here a week before I uh, I went to Barcelona, okay. and we were talking. And it wasn't. It was hot. Like there was was in the air, and the people were talking about it. But right, it wasn't right, right. that big. So I said, Yeah, I'll go to Barcelona. Okay. Uh, no big deal, and I'll come back. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And once I got there, my uh, flight was cancelled. My flight back was cancelled. Okay. Wow. And um, and both of her, who her, her, sorry, her roommates decided to come back to Malaga to live with their parents. So okay. it was kind of convenient for both of us to stay together in uh, her apartment and ah, okay. just stay there for okay, a while. Okay, well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. So then, uh, when so you were there when the lockdown went into place, and then what was it like in Barcelona when you guys when the lockdown went into place? Well, there was no people on the street, right? And um, you could see fear, like, and the people's face or eye, we well, oh, could okay. only see the eyes because everyone's wearing the mask. Right, right, right. Okay. And they were very strict and the... Uh -huh. So everybody markets. everybody in Barcelona was wearing a mask? Everywhere you yeah, were? everyone ah, was okay. wearing a mask. Because it wasn't that strict here, especially when it started here, there was like nobody wearing the mask here in Malaga. Hardly anybody. Well, yeah, there most people were wearing masks. There was no one on the street. Okay. Um, so so the, police, the police were pretty, the police were pretty strict there in, in Barcelona. They were enforcing it pretty pretty severely I guess so but in fact here I saw I'm, I'm back for one day and I saw more police than I saw over there ah okay interesting yeah, yeah, yeah. much more police here okay um, yeah so it was pretty it, at the beginning it was much stricter I guess uh -huh. and now it's starting to loosen up I noticed time. that here too I noticed it was kind of strict for a while and then it was kind of seemed relaxed a little bit and then I went out one day and it was a lot of police and it was a lot of police and I Heard some people in the neighborhood that actually got tickets, and uh, I talked to some people, and uh, you know they got the tickets are pretty expensive. They're like five hundred euros or something like that. They're really, they're really, there are more. I'm not sure exactly what they are. So, yeah, I was just at a friend's place because I put my bags there because I'm leaving. I have too much luggage, so I decided okay. to keep some. Okay, that's right. You just so now you decided you came back to Malaga. Yeah. We're still under the quarantine now. So how did you? How did you? Let me let's talk about that. How did you? Um, how did you get permission? Did you have to have permission to come back to Malaga? Or so yeah, basically in the airport, I think I was the only one they stopped. But the border control, um, they stopped me, and I think as I looked like a traveler, I was right. wearing like uh, these jeans and a baggy okay. shirt and my. Okay. Uh, Backpack. Yeah, they were looking for that. Okay. Yeah, and they asked me. We, they asked me to come over, all in yeah. Spanish, of course. Uh -huh. um, sure. Uh, to see if you're a foreigner, probably. <laughs> yeah, and they said they asked me for my um, passport, and they asked, "What's your story? Like, where are you going? I'm going to Malaga. Where do you live? I live in Malaga. Where's your NIE? So I had a problem. I didn't have my NIE. I just got my NIE two days before I went to Barcelona. Okay. And I and left people that don't know that's uh, NIE here. It's like uh, what they use for um, uh, you have like your identification, basically your Spanish ID. Yeah. Um, so I didn't have it with me. I didn't know those of the laws that if you have an NIE, you need to take it with you. For me, it's usually passport. I'm abroad. I'm with my passport. Right, right, exactly. Um, so I said I don't have it on me, and then they were confused. They said, oh, you can't. You have to have it on you. Okay. And then I told them the story, and it's a bit confusing because my Spanish isn't 100%. And to explain them the story that I live in Israel, but now uh, I live in uh, in Malaga. Okay. I went to Barcelona to meet a friend. Right, got exactly. stuck a month and a half yeah. there. Now I'm coming, coming back, back to Malaga to, okay. to get my passport, my Israeli passport, because it's here in my apartment. Okay. 
because without it, I can't enter so Israel. So you've decided to, to not to wait out the lockdown. You're going to go back to Israel right now. Yeah, I'll try. At least I'll go to Barcelona because there aren't any flights out of Malaga. Okay. Yeah, like Malaga, there, there aren't any... The Malaga is completely closed, the airport. Yeah, wow. there's only flights like inside Spain. Okay, okay, so only flights inside of Spain right now, yeah. okay. I, well, I hope so. Let's but talk about, today is uh, Monday the 27th. It's uh, almost 9 o'clock at night, that's what time it is. Finish with the, um, the police then. So what happened then exactly there? Um, that's it. So then I told them the story, um, and they let me go. Okay. But, uh, I, I'm guessing I'm gonna have trouble now going back there. But yeah. I'll have to explain them the situation and right. tell them I don't have other options. Like, okay. I'm not, I don't have an apartment here anymore. And right. My friend is willing to take me in until I get a flight out of to Israel. Yeah. And that's the situation. If okay. they say no, I'm a bit in trouble. But I'll figure and it out. And everything's been. I mean, you uh, you came here to go to school then, right? And everything's closed. I'm sure. I mean, the school is all shut down. I didn't come for school. I came from the for the Spanish course. I ah, just for the Spanish course. Yeah, I did okay. three months of Spanish. Course. Okay, I thought you were going to the university. Okay. No, my plan was to live here, to work, to start knowing the city. And, yeah. And uh, no, it's too bad that, that, that this all yeah. happened, man. Yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, I feel bad about the whole situation for sure. Yeah. Well, there's people who got hit much worse yeah honestly. yeah for sure for I'm, sure I'm lucky i guess yeah so did you um uh did you know anyone where you were staying did anyone have the coronavirus where you were staying in barcelona or anyone was affected any of the people did you know anything about that the families um no no uh, we were in a very nice building she has a rooftop like we'd go up to the roof but no okay one that's good cool. i had a friend in israel who had the coronavirus oh really in israel yeah wow okay yeah. Oh, so it's everywhere now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So you, so finally, you were able to fly. You were able to fly back, and then you, when you arrived, you arrived today or yesterday? No, I arrived yesterday. Yesterday. Night, okay. And I took a taxi. And what was that morning. like? Was there many people on the airplane? How what was that like? Did you have to wear a mask? Or was everybody masked up? Or the, did they have flight attendants? I mean, how did, um, <laughs> how, how did that work? I think they look pretty chill, as a matter of fact. People were, like, they were chill, people wearing a mask or people who were not wearing masks. Okay. Ah, some people on the plane were not wearing a mask. Yeah. Oh, that's, uh, I thought that would be mandatory right now. That's what they're talking about, making that mandatory everywhere. Huh? Well, yeah, I think people... Did they, it's, it's, did they take your temperature? It's to protect other people. Like, it's less to protect yourself. It's more to protect other people if okay. you have the virus. Sure. Then. Sure, but in an enclosed space like that, like an airplane, I yeah. thought that would be mandatory because I thought in the metro they were saying, I've been watching the Spanish news, and they're saying that in the metro you're supposed to wear it, and uh, they were actually handing them out in the uh, in the metro. People going to the metro, the police oh, were really? handing them out. Yeah, the uh, the mask. Interesting. Yeah, that was in Madrid. I saw that in Madrid. So I don't. Know, I assumed it would be the same in Barcelona. Well, Did you ride the metro while you were in no, Barcelona? No, you didn't no. go on the metro. I okay. took the bus. I was the only one on the bus. <laughs> the only one on the bus. Wow. We're gonna wait until eight, and I'm sitting. There's no one here. No one's gonna come. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. That's yeah. crazy. So how many how many people exactly you think were on the plane? I guess uh, around fifty. I, I maybe I'm like completely wrong, but I I think just from like a, like looking 50, 60 people. Fifty sixty. Okay. So so, so, like so a decent amount then. Yeah, it actually was it was surprising. I did, I thought there'd be much less people, but there were yeah there were. And they were all people. Spanish people or some foreigners um, too. Mostly Spanish, I guess. Mostly Spanish. Yeah. Okay, mostly Spanish yeah. people. But I was sitting like I sat alone. I sat alone. Okay. So they, well, they have distance between the people. Is that what they had? Was they asked sitting together? for distance um, only only when you stand up to get out of the plane. They ask. They do it row by row. So you keep on sitting. That's actually a good idea. I think they should do that all the time. Yeah. Instead of people jumping up. But, um, so that went off smooth. So then you finally made it back to Malaga. You landed in Malaga. And then what was the airport like? I imagine that was surreal. Nobody in the airport, anything? Not a lot of people. That was the only flight, by the way. Like when I got to the airport. And that was, was the only flight? Oh, that okay. was the only flight leaving. So there's the table, oh, wow, the wow. screen. It just says That's amazing. Malaga. I've been to that airport in Barcelona. It's a giant airport. I mean, yeah. it's huge. It's yeah. huge. It's El Prat. That's what it's called, El Prat Airport. Yeah, in Barcelona. Huh? I was there when I came. I lived yeah. in Barcelona for about three months when I oh, first really? when I first came to Spain. Yeah, I lived in, in Barcelona. So. Oh, you told me right. You told yeah, me. yeah. I lived there. What part of Barcelona were you in, do you? Um, it's it was kind of the center. I can't remember the name of the street. Oh, uh, Calle de de Carsp. Calle de Carsp. Okay. Carsp. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, was it close to any um, any of the sites that you would know? Um, not very, not very close. It was pretty close to the beat. Well, close to the beat. As a matter of fact, I didn't see Barcelona. Like I didn't, I didn't yeah. get to see no, Barcelona. It's a shame. Like um, I didn't see much. From the sta- from the airport to her house, uh-huh. and that's it. Now, did you see anything strange in Barcelona? Anything interesting that caught your eye, or? Um, no. Anything, anything strange happened while you were there? You were out to shop, sometimes you went out to shop. Did you go out alone? You went out with her? or How, how did that work? Uh, at the beginning it was a bit like people were nervous. You could see people were nervous. We're nervous. There were a lot okay. of police officers in the, okay. and security people, uh, security guards in the shops oh, just okay. to make sure everyone's going oh, well, by the rock. No, we, we didn't have that here. I didn't see any security here. No. I saw some people lined up for the um, shops about the first week. Yeah. There was a lot of that, but then it kind of calmed down. There's not too much of that now. Yeah. Was there any shortages of anything in Barcelona? No. Well, yeah, not a lot, but uh, at the beginning, I guess, like everywhere, there was toilet paper. Was <laughs> toilet paper. Everybody was yeah. buying all the time. I still don't understand that one. I, yeah. <laughs> you think in the lab, to me, I would buy food, I would buy something to, to eat. Paper. Yeah, yeah, toilet paper would be the last thing on my mind. And they said people were buying toilet paper, so I guess everywhere that was happening. And you probably saw um, at eight o'clock people were clapping. clapping yeah, I, I, I like that. That was very nice. Yeah, that yeah. was cool. I can imagine in in uh, Barcelona that was happening a lot on yeah. all the balconies. We, it was nice. Like it gets in your head every time, every day at eight o'clock. You're like, it's like a barge clock that just says, okay, you go out to the. So there was a lot of that. You saw a lot of yeah. that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's nice. Very cool, man. Very so you're back in Malaga, and you're gonna go back to you're gonna go back to where you live now, to Israel, to your home. Well, I. That's where you're gonna try. I hope again. so. I okay. hope so. Yeah, I hope I'll get back uh, soon. Um, first, I'm stopping at her place because, for now, there are flights, but like so, I look up a flight, and it says the flight is scheduled. Two days after, it's cancelled. So it isn't really safe to purchase a flight now to Israel, not yet. Um, okay. But as soon, I guess in the in the next couple of days, the fl- like they'll say, okay, there are flights or there aren't flights, and then I get my flight. And, okay. Yeah, I'm hoping to get back to Israel. I can't do this living in an apartment anymore. Yeah, yeah. I in can Israel, imagine. Yeah, my family they live in like a in. It's in a house, like a rural area. Ah, okay, a okay. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, that's nice. Okay, so you said you're gonna you're gonna be going back to your family's house, and your family lives uh, more in the in the country, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In so that would be nice. Side, yeah, that's yeah. nice. So yeah, because I'm going a little bit crazy here. We're not allowed. Uh, you wow. know, the similar same thing. We're not allowed. You know, to do exercise. And I, I'm not really. I don't really like the situation. I mean, I think like in the United States, you're allowed to go out for an hour a day to exercise. In my country. Well, I guess here. Sorry, here. In Spain, in Israel, in Greece, and it and those in these Mediterranean countries, uh-huh. I don't know. I know it's back home. They give us. We say a fr- there's a, the saying. You they give you a finger and you take the whole hand. You know that uh, that saying. Sure, sure. So if I think if they'll be letting people out here a bit more, they'll just take it over yeah, the limits. Yeah. And that's probably what the word about yeah. think. Yeah, and Spain was hit really hard. I mean, to yeah. be fair, I mean Madrid, Barcelona. I mean, you're talking about some of the hardest hit places in in the whole world. Yeah. Exactly. So I think it's it's good for now. Um, and look, we are the lucky people. Eh? There's people who who got hit very hard. Yeah. And I'm not talking about all the casualties and the sick people, but I'm talking about the um, ment the people who got like suffered mental issues or yeah, that's have, true. Um, ec- um, have money problems. Yeah. yeah. They have mortgages. They have children. Yeah. So well, that's the that's the concern now. Is people aren't working and they don't yeah. have money and things like that. So, so I, I'm I, when I get down, I'm like, okay, look, you're in a good situation. Your situation is pretty good, and that keeps me up. It was a great time to think, think about life and think what I want to do. And it yeah. was like just you know you, we're not like this time it, like we're not gonna get this again. Well, I hope not. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I, I hope not. So yeah, that's what the, that's the concern. Maybe life will change. Uh, you know, forever or for a, for a little while, for sure. People yeah. are gonna have to live a little bit differently. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So when you came back to Malaga, um, did you notice a difference between here and Barcelona at all? Any difference? How the people are handling the lockdown or more security, less security? 
Uh, well, I saw more police, but it's smaller, so... Uh, okay, maybe um, noticed it more, okay. Yeah, I noticed it yeah, more. Yeah. Um, well, they have been keeping people in their area, I noticed that. No, they're not yeah. they're getting too far. There's been a few days where there was a lot of police out, so it's like very surprising to me because Malaga, I'm used to, it's very relaxed. You know, the police here in Spain yeah. are very relaxed. And it's kind of uncomfortable. I saw them stopping a man with a dog and questioning him, and it was like... I made, I said this in my other video, it made me feel kind of uncomfortable because I'm not used to that here in Spain, I'm not used to that kind of feeling. Yeah, oh well, we're, back in Israel we're used to that kind of stuff. Oh, okay, you're used to being stopped, okay. Not being stopped, but there's a lot of like Question. military and police okay. around Israel, so it's, uh, yeah. it, it's a bit different, but um, we're used to it. But here I definitely saw more police. And, okay. Uh, and yeah, so... Did you see any military? Military on the street, like in Barcelona? Or? Uh, because one day I saw a military a vehicle coming when it first started. First military, military, no. And I heard some helicopters also. Anything like that going on in Barcelona? No. Well, good luck. I hope you're able to get a flight back, man. If you don't get the flight back, what are you going to you going to stay in Barcelona then? Probably, yes. First of all, I need to get there. If I get there and I don't get a flight out, I'll stay with uh, my with friend. With your friend? Okay. Yeah, I'll stay Is there. Is she a Spanish, Spanish girl? She's Spanish, yeah. Oh, well, you can marry her. <laughs> uh, yeah, I stay in Spain. Spanish, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can learn to uh, practice. Your, yeah, your Spanish is probably getting much better. Then. It's getting better. I'm getting yeah. better. But, uh, okay. I'll be back here, I hope okay. so. Okay. Muchas gracias por este este entrevista. De nada. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, man. Okay. And uh, thank you for joining us today. Wish him uh, the best when on his way back. And uh, if you have any comments, you'd like to make some comments, please leave them below in this video. And uh, yeah, thank you so much uh, for for watching today. See you in the next um, update. Take care. Stay safe.